Hello there, welcome to episode 9 of Combat Achievements and Collection Log on Old School RuneScape. The highlight of episode 8 was getting the 16th pet on my account, and that one was the prestigious Bloodhound on my 316th Master Flute overall. In the Combat Achievements, I finished off the medium tier for good and made a start on some tasks as some wilderness bosses and the alchemical hydra, and that's now 182 out of the 410 tasks in total complete. In this episode, we'll be heading to some new places for the combat tasks, including Hespori, Vorkov, Chambers of Zeric, and some uh, Theatre of Blood Learning, as I would like to get back into raiding again. I hope you enjoy. Starting off with something I definitely haven't done for a while, yes, the Hispori. So I used to do this for the farm runs and also post 99 to try and get the uh, pet. And of course, you get the bottomless bucket and the uh, seeds, which you can use in the guild, but it was uh, pretty much useless um, after getting the pet. So yeah, just had this one. Probably in there for a few hundred days, I reckon. So, yeah, a few tasks with the Spory, none that are particularly difficult apart from the Grandmaster speed run. Probably going to take a few tries, but the nice thing about here is you can just simply uh, reset the boss. It is in an instant, so if it were the first part of the fight goes wrong, you can just uh, teleport out and it will uh, start the fight again if you go back in. Yes, that was a couple of tasks done there the speed trialist and also killing the flowers uh, within uh, a few seconds of each other. And yeah, we'll uh, see you in 24 hours. Got an elite casket here, got that bloodhound now, so going to be doing more elites for those log slots. Uh, nothing there, unfortunately. Still got a few to go on the hards, as well as the gilded and third age chance. And yes, nothing. Back at uh, Armadale, and yes, uh, Mage Minion hits me, uh, Kree's Mage Attack hits me once. Kree's Mage Attack hits me again. Kree claws me, Kree claws me, and I'm dead, and that's uh, yeah, quite a few chins lost. So yeah, make sure you click on uh, Kree in between your kills. And yeah, there we go, even better, the next pit, blowpipes are almost run out of scales. So no problem at all, that is Armadale Chain Skirt number 3 from Wingman Scree alone. So yes, uh, try and beat some of that minion RNG, I'll just uh, show you uh, the log from uh, that minion on screen right now. And there you go, 810 and 76.2 mil, so yeah, more profitable than Cree. And another hard casket. And some Seldom and Dehyde boots, they used to be worth a mil. Another new boss in terms of the combat diaries, a few tasks to do here, some of them are a bit more annoying than others. Yes, the, the one where you got to kill Vorkarth five times in a row without taking any damage from special attacks doesn't look like it's going to be uh, too fun. Yes, there's a few others, one where I've got to punch or kick Vorkarth to death. And we are missing some log slots too, or quite a few log slots actually, got the uh, both visages the dragon bone necklace and the jar so yeah kind of a couple of reasons to uh, do this boss and hopefully get some of those log slots uh, as we go through the combat diaries i'm going to stick them with the pointy end but yeah quite a few more to do here another hard casket and 34k okay just got a few uh, medium caskets and easy ones I won't uh, go through them always it's uh, pretty boring to see any medium casket that doesn't contain uh, ranger boots but uh, always enjoy doing these in uh, my downtime quite a cool activity you can always uh, watch a few things on the side at the same time and then a master clue from this easy clue so yeah that, that is a bonus that's probably where a lot of our masters uh, are going to be coming from and yet yeah, new collection looks like that's what we like to see Zamorak Godsword ornament kit and uh, yeah that bloodhound bringing us some luck Back to the Hesporia, a few more tasks to finish here. This is just one without using any prayer points and finishing Hesporia with a special attack. So got yet yeah, both of those done in one go and that's just the uh, speed run to go now. No juke pet. I got a Dagon of the King's task and just wanted to demonstrate one of the safest ways of entering the lair if you're new. All you do is get on the ladder at a point where none of the DKs are in aggro range, which does sometimes require a bit of patience depending on their position. You then run around at the outside of the lair until you get to the far corner, and then once you're there, just lure and lure over and kill Rex safely, as you will never be in aggro range of the other two. Make sure you're in long range for the trident, uh, unlike I was here, otherwise you can sometimes get uh, pulled in. Once Rex is dead, you can then kill Prime from a distance, and then finally Supreme, and uh, you're good to go for the trip. Next hard casket. 73k. Nice little uh, collection log slot there. Beekeeper's hat. That must have been about 10th time lucky, I think. Done loads of those random events and just get air uh, flax every time. Okay, 58k for that. And 100k. 93k. 
I've been killing a fair bit of this Seracnus whenever I feel a bit bored on the game. My KC has now passed 3,000 at that boss, so you do get lots of grubby keys. While you kill it, which open the grubby chest in the southwest part of the fourth lost dungeon. I decided to open 100 of these, which were stacked in my bank in hopes of getting the blue and orange x which are the metamorphoses for the Seracnus pet, into a different color. Though you've got to obviously get the pet first, and I'm still missing that. Uh, in these keys, I got just under 5 mil worth of loot. I didn't pick up all of the food. That probably uh, took about 500k of it or so away. So, yeah, about 4.5 mil overall from 100 grubby keys. And yeah, as you saw, I got the blue egg sack, but uh, not the orange one, unfortunately. So, probably be back for that uh, when we get the Sriracha pet. Back to the casket. It's got an elite clue here, and a mask clue, 205k. And I got three more caskets 400k master ish. And the hard casket, 52k, red dragon mask. And the elite clue, 155k. Okay, the HD plugin has uh, just been released, so the first place we're going to be testing that out is uh, Armadale. I've uh, got another one of those Aviancy tasks. And yes, there was quite a storm about the HD um, plugin from Runeite, if you didn't know. Yes, Jagex initially tried to uh, block it from coming into the game, but then uh, after a fed of uproar all over social media, they soon reversed their decision and it was uh, implemented into the game just uh, a couple of days later. So yeah, big uh, congratulations and well done to 117 for making that plugin. You can find that in the Runelight plugin hub. But uh, anyway, first trip into pre I wanted to do better than last time. It's not, uh, it's not Plank again. And yes, an Armadillo Hill first kill of the trip. So yeah, the HD certainly Giving us a bit of RNG there, so yeah, closing in on 1000 KC now. Just the 9 kills to go to reach that milestone, so we'll get that on the next trip. And that is the second Armadale Hilt uh, inside that KC. Shame to see it uh, so cheap though. You've probably noticed the lack of raiding content in the series so far other than the beginning, and I want to put a lot more effort into that from this point onwards. There are many combat tasks to complete in the Chambers of Zerek and the Theatre of Blood. I've now got uh, all the gear pretty much I could possibly want, so have uh, no excuse. I also do note Solo Cox fairly well from the end of my previous series, Noob Bios TV, and have uh, studied quite a lot of guides on it, but uh, yeah, it's easy to get rusty after you haven't uh, done the Solo Raids in uh, quite a while, and I've got uh, plenty of areas to uh, improve on in pretty much uh, all departments. And uh, yeah, collection log slots too, of course, uh, loads of items, got uh, five purples so far. Uh, three unique, so yeah, we've got two dexes, two arcanes, and one ancestral hat. So, yeah, still looking for uh, quite a few items, but a very low KC, just uh, under 80. Uh, so, that should uh, hopefully come with time. And that task, uh, just about uh, Undying Raiders, that's a deathless uh, solo raid, but uh, yeah, with that gear, I should barely be using any bruise at all. But uh, we won't talk about phase three, that's uh, usually where it goes wrong for me. I also did some theatre of blood learning with some friends from the clan I'm in. Uh, they were fantastic, helped me through a couple of uh, fairly clean completions. We ticked off the two down bloat tasks. Uh, yeah, just that one. Uh, no purple, unfortunately, but uh, for anyone. But yeah, I'm sure that'll come with uh, time and clean completions, uh, just like Chambers. Another place I haven't been to for a while is the Gauntlet and the Corrupted Gauntlet. And there are some interesting tasks to do here. A lot of the corrupted ones will be quite hard work, I reckon, but that's good as I can get a lot better at the content by going for them and uh, probably failing many times. Uh, some of them are replicated in the gauntlet, like uh, this one here, where I just have to kill the regular Hanlef without taking any hits off prayer. And yeah, we got there. In the end, that's uh, KC58. And yeah, 3, 2, 1, range. We all used to love that plugin before the uh, animation came. This next one was a bit messy if I'm honest and you'll see that by the Hunlef kill time at the end it involves only making one attuned or better weapon or it is uh, better known as the 5-1 method where one of the hits is a punch in order to keep the high DPS weapon going for the majority of the kill. It's actually the faster way of completing the gauntlet anyway I think so is a, a good one to learn for the future. We'll have to do uh, both of those in the corrupted gauntlet which is uh, yeah, going to be a test. Quick one in the Ice Demon room at Chambers, uh, Blizzard Dodger, so just uh, not using any prayer points against the Ice Demon and yeah, to frantically uh, run around and avoid the mage attacks. A very long casey here, this was the one where you have to use tier 3 armor, so yeah, the prepper did take quite a while, I have to do that one for the Corrupted too, so better get my skates on there when I do, there it is, 60 KC and Crystalline Warrior. And uh, no uniques from the regular gauntlet so far, just the one armor seed from the Corrupted. 
Another cool task is where you can't make any potions at all, so yeah, it does involve some prayer flicking or just not using wriggle and augury for the corrupted will so need a lot more prayer flicking, I'd say. Uh, otherwise, the DPS just isn't going to be enough. But I uh, also did another task here the uh, perfect crystalline hunt left, which means uh, no stepping on the wrong tiles, uh, no taking any hits off prayer, no bumping into the tornadoes, and also no hitting the hunt left of the wrong style. So, yeah, it was a bit of a pain that one. It's probably going to be even more of a pain for Corrupted as, uh, yeah, Gauntlet's uh, extremely easy compared to that. And it's 61 KC in a Dragon Halberd. A few clue scrolls to finish the video, and there's a master clue to start us off from at 674 medium clues. And that's master clue 320 for 500k. And i got another master clue. And uh, I did plank deliberately here, don't worry. And it's uh, Mimic, and that's 33 Mimic KC now. And 25 Raynars from at this one. And that's an Amulet of Magic T from an easy clue, that's uh, a new one on the log. And a white boater, that's another new one on the log. There we have it, episode number 9, completing a bunch of tasks from different bosses and raids knocked out in this episode. A few from the Chambers of Zerk, the Theater of Blood, uh, the Gauntlets were those main highlights, and uh, made a decent start on the Aspori and Vorkath. And here are the total completed tasks in each tier, and we now set up 195 out of 410 overall with the easy and medium tier already complete. Not many boss drops to talk about sadly in this one, but some clue scroll additions and other niche items obtained in this episode, such as the blue egg sack to recolor the Seratinus pet if and when we get it. Uh, also, one piece of the beekeeper outfit after about the 10th try it seemed. That's uh, 613 out of 1,365 on the log, so not too far away from the halfway mark overall if we uh, get a skates on there. In the next episode, which will be number 10, I do plan to have a section at the end showcasing what my collection log looks like and exactly where I've gotten lucky and uh, where I've gotten unlucky, so look out for that. Otherwise, plenty of raiding wilderness bosses to be getting on with in the next episode as we will push to complete the next tier of the combat achievements, which is the hard tier. Thank you very much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video.